nothing to say, man. You got so much more to talk about than me. Okay. I got a feeling that this is finally working because it says recording in the top left. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> whoever is editing this, go ahead. You can edit now. Hey. Hey. Hey, my name is Ed Rigsby. I'm a CAE. We all know that's a certified association executive. And I am a CSP, which you may not know is a certified speaking professional. And my co-host is... Everybody, I'm Matt Mantione, CAE. I'm the Senior Director at SNAMI. Ha very happy to be here. And uh, Ed, thanks for allowing me to join you for this conversation. I appreciate it. Well, Matt, your, your youth and your good voice make me look good. So um, the, uh, the organizers of this conference on the first video, they go, <laughs> Oh my God, that guy's got a great voice. That's so funny. And I told him, he's married, leave him alone. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's true. So, so the title of today's program is Membership is Everybody's Business, which um, I'm going to do a little plug here, which just happens to be the subtitle of my new book. Um, here's the thing. What I want to talk about is strategy. And Matt and I are going to get into both strategy and the tactics thereof. We, uh, Matt and I have done a lot of work together. And one of the things that we've really observed, realized that, that not enough organizations really have their membership strategy. They've got a couple of little processes here and there, but they don't have a strategy. And membership is everybody's business is about having a strategy. It's about having a strategy where you have a strategy that your organization has the will to grow. You know, you have a strategy that your organization is looking at how to give to, to increase the member value proposition. You have a strategy on how your organization is retaining members. You have a strategy on how your organization is um, getting members back, the reacquisition. You have a strategy on member recruitment and, and so forth. There's several other strategies, but I'm not going to spend the time to talk about it. So, in looking at, at membership as everybody's business, in your organization, this really needs to start at the chief staff executive level and um, move into partnership with the chief elected officer. And each of those two folks need to let this idea filter down through their, um, uh, their appointed organization. So the chief staff executive is, is needs to, to filter down into, into his or her staff on making sure that, that all the silos in the organization recognize that membership is everybody's business and are doing things to uh, move the strategy forward, not create roadblocks for the strategy. Same thing with the volunteer leader. He or she needs to make sure that all of the people on the board and the various leaders and even out in the components or sections or chapters or whatever they're called, um, that, that they understand that there's a strategy that's going on and that they don't become roadblocks. Um, so with with that, let's talk a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I jump in real quick? Did you, so want me based to take, on, did, did you want me to take a breath? Take a breath, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you almost as I'm like I'm a participant uh, because you've worked with so many organizations um, throughout your career. Um, I'm, I'm curious, actually, how many organizations have you worked with, or, or let me rephrase that. Um, how many organizations have you worked with actually that don't have a strategy? And um, what, what has been I'll, the result? What have you seen the result of from a member centric standpoint, from a member is everyone's business standpoint with, without a strategy? I think a lot of us have, have been in discussions with other friends and peers in the industry uh, but again, based on the gravity of, of associations you've worked with, I'm curious to know from your perspective. Most don't. Most organizations don't have a strategy. So many organizations that may or may not have a strategic plan. Uh, um, new presidents coming in don't even know that there is a plan and they've been on the board. They're in the association world, um, I, I I see so much of every time a new volunteer leader 
comes on board and is the president or chair or whatever the title is, they're going to make the organization in their eyes. And, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's, as long as it's following a strategic plan. Right. But, but it's, 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 it's common, it's frequent that the new chief elected officer, let's just call him president for this discussion, the new president comes in and goes, okay, you know, my goal is to make our organization, and they spew out 10 or 15 things. The challenge is, is the chief, is, is, is the chief staff executive, which would be either the executive director or the CEO, is that person strong enough to say, whoa, let's put the brakes on it. We have right. a strategic plan. And, and, and I think that, that that is a, I don't want to say it's a global problem, meaning everybody has it, but I do want to say that it's, it's a very common problem, and I'm really sad when I work with organizations how few have a, even a strategic plan that 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 they they refer back to and everybody knows what they're doing. Right. You know, when I'm using the word strategy, you know, I'm I'm talking about in particular to have a a, a member growth strategy. You know, you, you've got to have processes and, and programs and things in play. That and, and you know this. I mean, you're, you're kind of a master at this stuff. That um, that everybody understands this is what we're doing. And before we, um, before we start the video, you'd mentioned about one of your volunteer leaders called you up and said, Hey, you know, Matt, I really like what you're doing with such and such here. It's great. It's awesome. You know, now I'd like you to add A, B, C, D, F, G to it. And you said your response was, well, you know, I have a plan. I'll consider what you're saying. So you didn't just jump and go, oh, okay, how high do you want me to jump today? You were strong enough to say, right. tell me what you got to say, I'll consider it. So too many organizations, that doesn't happen. Too many organizations, there's not a strategy. So for, for going into today's discussion, um, one of the things that I've been pushing for quite a, a long time now is to try to get association societies to, to look at themselves and to become member centric, not just member, but member ROI centric. So we're talking about, you know, with membership being everybody's business, then everybody in the organization is accountable to help make the organization more member ROI centric. So as an example, uh, the meetings department, meetings usually doesn't think much about membership, but the meetings department has to make sure that, that there's some member-only activities, that the badges say, you know, you know for, for members that it says it's, it's an XYZ organization member, that person. And, and so the membership department has to be asking themselves, okay, we understand that there's a strategy for growth. What can be our strategy within our silo of operation to help that? And then we go into the marketing department. We go into the communications department. And, and, when, and at the end, I call this the mosaic strategy because when everybody's pulling all their pieces together and painting this organizational picture that we all understand what our place is, you know, we all understand what our process is that we're building, that we're putting in place to drive the strategy forward. And unfortunately, Matt, and, and you've seen it too. Not enough organizations have that. Most organizations, I, I, I don't want to say most, that's a bad thing to say. I'll say too many organizations are doing it from the seat of the pants. And right. every new volunteer leader, there's a new plan. I won't even call it a strategy, new plan. And basically organizations, they zig and then they zag and they zig and they zag. And they get, I don't want to say nowhere, but they don't get too far. Right. And a lot of those organizations, they start losing their members. They start hemorrhaging, and and when they start hemorrhaging, then they call somebody like me, or you know, I'm, I'm not the only membership consultant around. But uh, and and so that's that's mm -hmm. the big challenge. So right, right, and, and, and that, that's that's a good point. It's 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 leading. It's it's when when it's leading with the tactics, right? Kind of what we talked about all the time. So when you're leading with the tactics, as you said. We're, we're, where do you, what are you tying that to? Where are you trying to go with it? So, so 
you know, it's the example you had given as far as, you know, a lot of times how the board functions is almost representative of how sometimes the staff function. So if you have a, if you have, yeah. right. So I wanted, to, I wanted to talk about that. So if you have a board, um, which, which we've all seen and, and they exist um, and it's no one's fault. It's just, it's, it is what it is in a way. Right. So you have a, a board that's dysfunctional. Um, and one again, one of my questions to you is, that, is, is what is the result of that internally? What has that caused internally? Sure. When, you know, when you got a lot of organizations, um, a lot of organizations, let, let me back up. I wish that more association professionals would, would go look at earning their CAE because it forces them to learn best practices. And in many organizations, a lot of organizations, people have, have figured go arounds, work arounds. It's not the best way to do it, but it works for us. And, and so they just don't know what are some of the best practices. Well, in association governance, most of us know that, that you know, the chief staff executive is in charge of the staff. The chief elected officer is in charge of the board. The chief staff executive and the chief elective officer, they've got to be in partnership. And when some of the volunteer leaders start trying to tell staff what to do, then the chief staff executive has to go to his or her partner, the chief elected officer, and say, you got to get your board in line. These people can't be doing this. And so, so when we find, and I find this with a lot of the organizations that I work with, I, I see this all too frequently. What was that? What, kind of, what face was that? Ed? That was, that was like, it? that was my, I have no hair to pull out, <laughs> but wishing I had hair to pull out. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I enjoyed that. Yeah. All, so it, it's, you know, we, we've got this situation where most trade associations or professional societies are made up of very bright people. They're made up of business leaders, professionals that, that are really good in their domain. You know, if they're a dentist, they're a great dentist. If they're a roofing contractor, they're a great roofing contractor. If they're an engineer, they're a great engineer. You know, if they're a dog catcher, they're a great dog catcher. You know, and they have their business, but they try to take that knowledge and overlay it in their nonprofit experience because they haven't taken the time to learn nonprofit governance and how to run a nonprofit. They haven't learned what their fiduciary responsibility is to the health of the nonprofit. And so they try to, on a board, you know, you got 10, 15 guys and gals that are very bright, are running businesses, and they're all trying to run this business. And it's not their place. And, and so they don't understand what the job of a board member is to do. Um, you've seen it, I've seen it. Uh, a board, uh, let, let's take a, a society or an association that's got a, a one to five million dollar budget, okay? And a board member might start an obnoxious discussion about an executive director spent $75 on flowers. Who cares? Why? And, they, and that might be an hour conversation during a board meeting. Well, were there flowers for the person or were there some? No, somebody? no flowers for somebody, a board member that died or something. It just, you know, it's, it's like, it, it's like, and, and see, the chief um, elected officer, when he or she's not strong enough to call down the board member, when he or she is not study Robert Rules of Order, I mean, let's face it, most associations in their bylaws, it usually says that the meetings are going to be run basically by Robert's Rules of Order. There's, you know, the, the, uh, the I think the Women Republican Group, the, the Parliamentarian Society, they've all got, you know, cheat sheets and stuff. Anybody can go get these real things. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough when I was in my early 20s uh, as president of a, of a board that ran properties. I had a parliamentarian on the board, so they, you know, the guy was very cool about teaching me. Simple Robert's Rules of Order keep the meeting going clean, going well, going organized. And a lot of um, uh, chief elected officers, they just they don't know, and they and they mm -hmm. they run crummy meetings. I hate to say it, they run crummy meetings. And so instead of focusing on instead of the board focusing on strategy, direction, mission, governance, 
you know, the big picture stuff, what they should be focusing on, they're spending their time calling up you at your desk saying, hey, Matt, you know, like what you did, but could you add A, B, C, D, E, F, G to it? Like, <laughs> you know, and, and I think that becomes a problem. So where it becomes a problem in, in getting specifically in, in, into this naming organization, yeah. you know, when I came on board, uh, they had had a, a – and just so everybody understands that I came on board um, about 12 months or so before Matt came on board. Um, so they had been on a nine year drop of losing members. They were hemorrhaging members. And the first thing I did was, was went in and started doing some triage and started dealing with as much low hanging fruit as we could. And the great thing about that, within six months, we stopped the hemorrhaging. The not so great thing about that uh, we did it so fast that everybody was sitting back, oh, this is wonderful, oh, we're, we're heroes. And then they quit working. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that was the challenge. But, but what we wanted to talk about, what Matt and I wanted to share with you as, as association professional, the process of what we did at SNAMI, uh, some of the things that I did before Matt came, and then some amazing things that Matt did uh, once I was there, that, that, that we believe that will help you to, to be able to um, understand the, the importance of realizing that membership is everybody's business, help you to understand the importance that, um, that, that you have to build a member ROI-centric organization to grow your organization, and the importance that, that you have to have a, a master strategy, but also within the various uh, activities, you've got to have a strategy. Some people might call it a plan or a process. I'd rather call it a strategy. Um, Anything to add to that, Matt, before I move into some of the specifics? No, I don't think so. I think it was important to note that, you know, you've been there for about a year or so before I left um, uh, to come to SNAMI from ASIS, you know, was there for a long time, over 10 years, great organization. And, um, and I appreciated the, um, you know, you, you're the opportunity um, I was, I was given uh, presented by, I should say, by you to help, and and complement the work that the good staff were doing and you were doing and the board was doing so it was really a fun opportunity and a fun time to kind of step in sure and you know also uh if time permits in this uh broadcast where uh matt and i talked about we're gonna we're also gonna try to bring up some of the, the pitfalls too i mean nobody wants to talk about the things that don't work well, they, but um but we're going to talk about some things that we did that, that did work but if time permits uh we may also get into some of the some of the pitfalls, some of the specifics, some of the, the challenges that we had. So the first thing is um, looking at, uh, at, at Stevie's uh, hemorrhaging of members. Um, I took a look at, at their retention program and um, they kind of didn't have one. And so we put together a, a two-step program. Uh, one step is a, uh, a program call it the 12 month 12 touch for new members because we all know everybody that's watching this knows that the first year members new members are most at risk and that 12 touch program was a basic idea of yeah. in addition to all the other things that the organization would do there'd be specifically 12 touches each month now many of you as an example uh maybe you send out a a membership packet and um your membership packet got a whole bunch of stuff in it well what we did at Sammy, they did something similar, but we took the membership packet apart and we started sending things piecemeal. So um, every, you know, if you send your members a membership packet, that's one relationship bank deposit. But if you send them the stuff that's in the packet separately, it's multiple relationship bank deposits. Uh, having the um, volunteer leaders call is another relationship bank deposit. You know, so. So we mixed it up between electronic and hard copy mail and phone calls, but new members would get a touch each month. We were trying to make relationship bank deposits. So in a year, when we wanted to make a withdrawal, having them renew, they'd be ready. Mm -hmm. And again, that, that ties into what you were saying before as far as you know, that's, that's the best practice. You know, you want to have those 12 touches, at least a 12 touch campaign. And, and it's tied to the strategy that you were speaking of, you know, and that just yeah. by itself, um, I, you know, of course I can, I can talk to it is, was, was very, very successful. 
um, based on the numbers, I recall almost a 20% increase in first year retention from doing that. Um, because, uh, you know, because the engagement was really good. I thought, you know, putting that in there Ed, was, was fantastic. And the staff did a good job of executing those tactics. I think there was good value as well. So, you know, engagement is about value, right? So oh, absolutely. that's something that we're doing more of now, of course, yeah. on what you set up. And that's part of my charge now is looking at, you know, what's working, where are people responding the best to, um, yeah. you know, they love these birthday t-shirts, so we're going to keep doing it. You know, so that value, that, that the value is so, the, that value that you've added, we're assessing, I'm continuing to assessing and adding to that. So again, yeah. it's about value and that's what we're continuing to build upon. I, I got to give credit to your predecessor, Mike Hall. Uh, the, the, the birthday t-shirt thing was his idea. You know, yeah. I, I laid out, I said, Mike, you need to, here are some of the ways that you can do it. And, you know, so we worked together, but I left him to, to, to actually come up with some of the specific Excellent ideas. Stuff. And that Absolutely. was, so Mike, wherever you are, Mike, uh, I forgot what organization he's working for now, but Mike, you know, kudos to you. Absolutely. The other thing that, that, that we did was really work hard on a, on a formal retention program. And, and the formal retention program, it, it's a combination of, of retention maybe reacquisition, but I'll call it retention because we're going up to the people that hadn't, that the memberships hadn't expired, but they were within that uh, grace period. Now, one of the things that, a couple things that, that I convinced the board of directors to do, um, one of the things was change from uh, calendar renewal, so everybody renews uh, December 31st, to anniversary renewal on new people coming in. And we also gave an option a year ago where, where people could, um, if they were to, if they were, if they were to sign up for auto renewal, they could change their uh, anniversary date and actually get a few extra months membership for free. Um, but they had to sign up for the auto renewal. So, so by, by, Going to the staff and the volunteer leaders and out to SAMI has their components are called sections and and getting the people out there in the sections to, to actually make the calls. The first year, it was a little bit easier for them because we had three months um, grace period and I convinced SAMI to go down to one month grace period, which not everybody liked, but I don't believe that we need to train our members to believe that they've got all year to renew. And that's the reason for that. So, so in having a, a structured renewal process to where the, the, the staff runs it and, and, and the staff is, is each week at the end of the week sending out notices, okay, here are the members that renew. And then the sections, the local people are making the calls. Now, some sections, the leadership did a good job of delegation and got several people to do the work. Some, the leadership didn't delegate as well and they did it themselves. And then that became uh, troublesome. And then, so, and that worked out pretty darn well. That, that really helped us to, to retain members and, and to, to turn around in six months. We, we, we turned the ship around in six months, but then. Ed, sure. stop it right there. By the way, I like your Hawaiian shirt. Oh, um, so just I'm, one, I don't want to get too much in the weeds. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Southern Florida. I'm in Southwestern Florida this uh, week and uh, not in my office. So thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. I do like it though. Um, just want to point out that uh, you said you brought up from three months to one month as far as the grace period. Yes. Right? And I think, um, you know, a lot of us listening, again, I consider myself a participant listening, learning from you, but um What's interesting about that is the renewal call, the retention calls I was making, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, some of the feedback I was getting was, I, you know, thanks for the call. It's great to speak with someone. I haven't spoke with someone, geez, in a long time. So that's a different discussion. But what they were saying was, I thought I had another two months to renew. Is there a grace period? So that, that was in a lot of my notes and some of the notes I would give back to the you know, to the leadership as far as feedback goes. So that's just kind of to your point, um, something to think about, something to think about because again, training those volunteers, I mean, firsthand, 
right out of the gate. Well, I have, a, I think, 14% of them for my calls said that to me. Well, there, there's a good and a bad to, to, to this. And, you know, I mean, again, not every, not every plan, every piece of a plan is right for every organization. Right. But that um, tied to your strategy is my point. Yeah. It, it, that tied it, to it. Here, here's, here's, I'll go a little bit deeper on that. I believe that we need to show our members that we're delivering high level value. We need to show them that the member value proposition is high. If we, um, as some people like to call it, the post membership experience uh, or lapsed member experience, if somebody lapses and they still have access to the website, all the password protected, they're still getting everything, well, then we've trained them that they don't need to renew because they're still getting all the benefits of membership. So it, um, it, one of the things that, that I convinced them to do was on the magazine, there was, to put a belly band to, to let people know that you know, this is your last issue. You know, your membership has expired, you know, please renew and, and, and put the, um, the URL. So it's fascinating, Matt, that, that you can communicate with the members. And, and one of the things that Stamey had been doing, they were sending out emails like almost every day. And when I came on board, I said, no, guys, you, you, you know, once a week, that's it. And, and they actually created, God bless them, a, a communication policy where it was, okay, one email from the office a week, and then once a month, the wild card, you can just, you know, have that fifth email anytime you want. Now, you know, not every organization creates a policy and sticks to their policy, but when they do, it creates more value for the members. The point I was going to is that there was a lot of communication with the members. And I think that what had happened in years previous, the members were so spammed that a lot of the members weren't reading the emails, had already had their society in their spam block, and, and, and they weren't getting the information because, you know, and, and we've heard this a number of times with organizations. Oh, yeah, yeah, we want to create a lot of value, so we're going to send them an email every day. People, don't do that. Please, don't do that. Because your members don't like it. Um, so anyway, so getting back to, so we... The, 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 the low-hanging fruit, the stopping the hemorrhaging. Instant, uh, well, another thing, instantly, you know, they were giving free memberships with anybody that, that signed up for their conference. So we got, we got rid of that because the renewal rate was under 30% of people that got a free membership. So that was just becoming, uh, you know, a hamster running on a, on a spin wheel. Um, and it was costing the organization more money to process the people that they were, they were keeping. But by, by having a, a plan for the new members, by having a plan for the members at, at renewal, and then by when you came aboard, you really created the plan that, that was still missing that we hadn't got to, created the plan for the reacquisition. And, and after, and that's really what I'd like you to spend some time about in just a sec, is that after a member got their, their invoice, you know, either hard copy or email, after they got a postcard, after there was probably two belly bands on the magazine telling them that the membership expired, after their local section maybe or, or maybe didn't call, after all those no's, you put together a program, and I'm not going to use, I'm not going to steal any thunder. So why don't you go ahead and tell everybody about the reacquisition program that you put together and, and its success? Yeah, so I'll give, that's, okay. So that's a long story, and it's a good discussion to have maybe at, uh, you know, maybe next ASE event, probably a good one to have, right? Um, so I'll kind of like give the tour of, of the, the strategic tour of, of what we did. Um, so the goal was to develop a strategy to go after all of the, all of those who did not renew, right? So they, they've been terminated. However, your organization defines your data, your member data, which I really hope you do. I know a lot of organizations do not um, defining who their members are in their database. Huge, huge issue. I've seen a lot of uh, organizations. Um, and I've had, um, 
the opportunity to learn from some really good folks out there, some, some mentors. You had, of course, my old organization, uh, Peter, the CEO, my old boss, Jim. So we've had, I've had a lot of good mentors here, and um, defining your data is extremely important. We did not really um, understand, um, because we didn't find it, you know, what happens when a member terminates. So they get, what don't they get? What happens in the system? You know, want to yeah. make sure everything is defined. So when we pull it, it's accurate, right? So a whole different discussion. So let me get back to the tour part of the, re of the reinstatement. So um, this is kind of, I'm kind of jumping to a lesson learned because I think it makes a lot of sense right now. When I came in new, um, I, again, lesson learned. So I, I think I assumed that I could just kind of run, right? I could just run, spread my wings, fly. Um, having having some good expertise, having a CAE, having have understanding what my role is. Um, at the same time, I, I should have done a better job of of defining those responsibilities with leadership, understanding how the governance truly works. Uh, what does membership is everyone's business mean to the organization? I just assumed it was. You know, we were rocking and we could do this, right? So I say that because when I brought a reinstatement plan to the CEO, um, it, they, they had put forth a plan the last few years, I believe that. Is that correct, right? Uh, and uh, Several years back. Several years back. So I don't think it was very successful because, That's as you know, um, it wasn't approved. And... Um, you know, I think my approach could have been better, assuming it, this is what needs to be done. Um, and then you had come in and we talked through this and we kind of demonstrated on paper of what it should look like, what it can look like, understanding, uh, being empathetic to the past um, and et cetera, right? So, so, uh, so we changed the approach. You had come in and you had helped me get this approved. So again, I still kudos to you for that. So part of the approach, I've had a lot of success over the years partnering uh, with people like Ed, with partnering with MGI um, on some professional services, um, professional calling services. So many of you are probably familiar with them, uh, Tim, Charity. Um, we, we decided to create something I thought was, was unique, is unique, is, is creative. Um, and MGI ad, so I know you're going to say this to me. So marketing in general, and you've had some, you've had some experience with them as well. Yeah, they're great people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always, uh, I always give them a, I always give them a, uh, a shout out. So yeah. they're a great organization. So what we did, um, and again, we don't, you know, I don't know everything. This is just from experience. You know, again, working with and, and, and being successful, also not being successful, um, is a big part of why we have been successful today, and I believe we'll continue to be successful. So. We put together a, a program um, where we utilized an outside professional service. And um, Ed and I talked about, you know, how can we really go at it? You know, what, based, on our, based on what we're looking for, what's our end result, what we want in this time period, you know, our strategy. And we decided um, a couple of different things. And I think, you know, hopefully you, you, can, you can take some pieces of this and then make it your own. And uh, obviously, I was happy to talk about it you know, offline. Um, so we decided to go after a consultative approach. And I want to actually, boom, punt that to you, Ed, because you're the guy that said, you know, light bulb, this, tie, this type of approach would tie in perfectly to what we're trying to do, what you're trying to do. So can you talk a little bit about that approach and, and how that's yeah, worked for you? Sure, absolutely. I'll interject. Um, you know, and here's the thing. Look at in the association world, we, we hate to use the word selling. Yeah. We, we like to use the word we do. recruiting. Well, whether you call it member recruitment or you call it member sales, same thing. So, so I come from a sales and marketing background. So in, in looking at this, is consultative is, is me getting on your side of the table. It's me saying, okay, I'm not worried about what it is I'm trying to sell. It's me saying, I'm trying to get on your side of the table and understand what your needs are. Mm -hmm. And um, especially a lot of the millennials right now, they hate the old style selling. I've got two sons, 
one in his late 20s, one in his early 30s. And when somebody's trying to sell them, I mean, the old hardcore sell, eh, they close down. But by getting on, on, on your side of the table, understanding what your needs are, I'm not a salesman, I'm a consultant to you. And, and if, I enter, if I do my job right, and I understand your needs, there's a really good chance that the solution that I bring when I'm selling uh, membership is going to work. And so rather than, uh, Matt and I talked about this, rather than calling up and saying, hi, uh, I'm calling for Snamey, we want you to rejoin. We agreed that everybody's just going to slam the phone down. So, you know, mm-hmm. the idea is, there's an old saying that I learned from the National Speakers Association early in my career as a speaker. People don't care until they know how much you care. So, you know, whether it's me speaking from the platform, doing a keynote, um, if I'm just spewing knowledge, they don't care if they don't perceive that I care. Same thing with consultative selling, same thing with you, each of you, you know, the association or society you're with, your members, if they believe that you care about them, you're going to be able to influence them. But if they don't believe that you care about them, you're not going to be able to influence them. So Matt went into this thing from the perspective of it's consultative selling. It's first showing that SNAMI cares. And then after that, we'll, we'll figure out how we're going to sell to you. Mm-hmm. But, but not, I mean, on, on that call, some people just obviously renewed, but I'll, you know, I, again, Matt, I don't want to steal all your time. Yeah, no, I agree with you about the selling too, because I don't like the word. <laughs> what did I say? It was, um, I mean, I didn't make this up authentic engagement, right? Authentic engagement. So, um, it's, it's almost like a, a component relations, a CRP, um, you know, fundamental is you're trying to, to build trust with, with, with your volunteers and your components or sections. Sure. And you want them to, you want to make them feel that you understand how they feel and what they want. Right. So that's kind of the, another way to say it, I would say. And I think we should also say it's easy to do. It's, you know, Oh, of course. I've been doing this for 30 years and I still make mistakes. I still blow it once in a while, you know? So I I guess anybody, the the takeaway for people listening go, you know, Hey, (laughs) if, if you're not absolutely stellar at this, it's okay. It's okay. Anyway, right. Turn over yeah, And that's exactly right. So, so not getting too much into the weeds, um, getting back to the MGI tactics we had, the strategy actually, um, was we used, um, we, we built in the net promoter score into our tactics. And, and, you know, if you don't know what that is, look it up. Um, you know, it's a rating that will help you determine your, um, um, if, if cost, you know, how likely customers are to recommend your company or service or product to somebody else, a friend and peer, what have you. So, um, we, we led our, our professional services led with that, um, very carefully, again, carefully scripted script, um, um, curated by me there, everything was all partnered. We, you know, we, we made sure it, would, it was exactly how we wanted it represented, of course. And again, don't want to get in the weeds on that. Um, got great, great data from that. Um, again, we didn't lead with, you know, we need to renew. It's sorry to see you go. Would you mind? Um, and again, asking those questions, you know, asking questions of them, you know, how likely are you to recommend, you know, we'd love, you know, I'm sorry you left. Can you tell us about that some more? Right. So that was kind of the first tier for me. That was my, um, once I got the data, that was my secondary research. That was, that was, that's what I was looking for right there to, for, to prepare myself for what I was going to do. Um, some renewed, some didn't with them. Of course they had pretty good success, 20% um, acquisition on those non members. So again, very, very successful in my mind. Um, uh, earn back, we're not a bigger organization, earn back about 120, 130,000 lifetime value. Okay. Uh, that was again a, a really good uh, metric to show the board, which has not been shown to them before or what that meant. Um, sure. And based on if they renewed or not, the other question was, you know, can you tell us why you didn't initially or why you still won't? So again, we got some more data. And again, that's not something, you know, that's, 
That's not a brand new idea. You know, we got that data and then it was fed back to us. So we had success with the professional services program. And then once that was wrapped up after a month or so, I took that as the membership champion. There has to be a membership champion and typically it's your membership director, of course, leading that charge. Um, and I'd jump in. I see that you're, you, you may want to jump in on a couple of times you know, at some point here. But No, I'm just letting you go. Okay. Okay. I thought you wanted to say something. Or I saw your Hawaiian shirt shaking. Maybe that's what it was. So, <laughs> so the approach of going back to that consultative approach. So I had the data. Um, I went after um, using the net promoter score. I went after the, the nines and tens. People that said I would absolutely. Uh, there's about 170 of them or so based on the list I got back that did not renew, but it said, oh, 100%, give me, that's a nine or a 10. Okay, so I was able to take that data, um, formulate a what's in it for me, for them, what's emotional to them, why they didn't renew, um, trying to figure out their motivations before I made that phone call, okay? Um, I tested a little bit, emails and phones. I found that the, the, the emails, I was able to, um, have, I, almost everyone responded to me as far as I'm the senior director. So they wanted to see the credibility and the email. Um, and then I set up a phone call afterwards. The phone call got a lot of voicemails. Some people said, who are you? I don't believe you. So, you know, everyone's membership is different. Your members may not be so skeptical. Ours were. So that's just kind of one lesson learned from my, you know, as, as far as this goes. They're engineers. They're engineers, right. So the, the approach, um, again, was, um, I'm kind of just going to get right to it. Um, it was along the lines of how, what can we do? Tell me, show me, walk me through what we can do um, better for you to help you with, um, with your business, to help you remain a member of, of, of Sammy. Where, what can we do for you? Tell me more about that. I did not say... You know, uh, your membership expired. Can you, can I renew you today? You know, not a bad, not bad. I'm not saying it's wrong, but um, based on those results, I uh, there's so much I learned from these phone calls. There's so much I learned, and there's so much we're doing because of it. Um, was able to so MGI had success for us against small membership. You know, we're only looking at a, a universe of a thousand people that not, that didn't renew. Okay. Um, I was able to get back um, another 50 on top of what we already got back from the professional services, which more than doubled, you know, our net revenue of that was incredible. Um, you know, if you look at it on paper, um, earn back a lot of money or make a lot of members and a lot of lifetime value there. Okay. Well, you know, right, let me interject right there. I mean, the sure. whole concept that membership is everybody's business. Okay, so some people just renewed because the, uh, the organization sent them an, an invoice electronically. Um, some people renewed because people uh, out of the sections made phone calls. Some people renewed because uh, some of the oh, absolutely. leaders made phone calls. Yeah. Some people renewed because of what MGI did. And some people renewed because of what you did. I think the key is, is that that the, the piece that you added was an extremely successful piece to the total strategy. Right. And, and it was a missing piece that we hadn't got to yet. And so, so um, getting back to the, the, the core of, of what the session's about is reminding everybody that's listening that, you know, it, it does take the chief elected officer and the chief staff executive to drive this. It does take those folks to be the champions to push it out through the organization. And I'm just going to say this and I might upset somebody, but if you're a chief uh, staff officer, you know, CEO or executive director, whatever your title is. And if you're saying, well, yeah, it's not my problem. Membership is the membership department. It's like, oh God, no, we got it wrong. You got it wrong. The membership department needs the support, as do all the other departments. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? 
Absolutely. Okay. I mean, membership, membership development has to be part of everything that the organization is doing, whatever function it is, it has to be built in. And that's the challenge that you saw coming in. Although, of course, you know, the volunteers, I mean, you're talking about a lot of passionate, wonderful people. They care. Everybody listening, everyone they work, every organization you represent, your volunteers care, do they not? Everybody cares. Sure. So it's something to do with and, that. And, you know, the thing is with, with when you came on board, you proved that the old, well, we, we, we've already tried that. Okay. Well, you know, how many of us do that too? Right. That's associations. Yeah. Associations have to be innovative. And, and if you say, oh, well, we tried that. Well, I think somebody like Matt was going to say, well, okay, you tried it, but did you try it this way? And did you try it with this cherry on top? And did you try it with this banana over here or whatever? And I, and I think that, that the challenge is that people in the association world have these, they, they obtain these erroneous beliefs that, okay, we tried X and it, it just didn't work. Well, just because it didn't work it doesn't mean the idea was bad. Perhaps the execution of the idea was bad. Perhaps the strategy was faulty on how you would use the idea. And I think that, that, that the really cool take home map, that I hope everybody hears, and especially uh, uh, the chief staff executives are watching this, is that here was a situation where we had a strategy, you added a piece to that strategy, the, the top, Chief Staff Executive, the Executive Director goes, no, 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 we tried that a long time ago, it didn't work. Yeah. And, and I know that we had to work together to, to get the thing through, but, but you, you brought the idea, you, you instead of um, putting brown frosting on the cake, you put pink frosting on or whatever the heck you did, you took the idea and you changed <laughs> it and you customized it to the need of the organization right. and it worked. And, I, and, I, and so when we're saying membership is everybody's business, everybody, every silo you're in, no matter what department you are, whether it's finance, whether it's um, meetings, whether it's uh, Marcom, you just you keep, you know, go through even advocacy. Um, we, we've got to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's our part? What can we do differently? How can we add to the strategy? And, and, and what can we do to help you know, prove that membership is everybody's business to help make our organization member yeah. ROI centric, which the outcropping or the byproduct of that is going to be that, that the member value proposition is going to increase. And when the member value proposition increases and you communicate that well with the market, your membership's going to increase. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just kind of to close it out and I'll kind of throw you the, the last words. Um, you know, assessing, assessing, right? That's something that, you know, we know doesn't get done enough. You know, so it's something we forget to do. You know, we can't forget to do that. You know, sure. it's a whole different discussion, but um, I made sure that, you know, when we got the data, when I was done with the program and making these phone calls myself and spending a lot of time doing it, getting just incredible information that the organization um, has not, did not do in a while um, as a membership person, director, you want to know, you know, what the members want, what's going on, what are the pain points, what do, they, what do we need? Um, so what, what we did um, was once we collated all the data, was able to show, you know, talking to people from all over the world um, that, wow, you know, membership really is everyone's business because I heard from our friends in Australia and Europe and South, South America, you know, again, it's the same thing is, I don't know what I don't know. I don't talk to my chapter. I haven't heard from headquarters. I don't take advantage of this feature. I don't see benefit from doing that. I haven't received that ROI. So again, kind of keeping it a high level, what we're going to be doing now, well, what was already provided was this report showing, hey, we need to make some tweaks in where we're going because of this data. So this data is helping me drive, for example, creation of um, a, a almost a member services document that helps drive customer value, member value, right? So again, it's just, it could be telephone, 24 hour turnaround. It could be, you know, a policy to, to have to reach out to, um, um, you know, new members more than once, whatever it may be, this data is helping me drive 
Or again, actually, let me throw this in there. A lot of people said, I don't listen to our uh, to webinars or attend events. Well, that's an event thing. So what's going on in our events? Um, what's happening there for that service, that, that program, where, uh, where, where are we missing membership? Where, where's the value? Where, where are we lacking there? So again, it's a great opportunity to use this program or this type of program that people already are doing, of course, um, and using it to go a step further to your strategy. What can we do differently that affects other parts of the organization, not just membership? It's not just our problem. It's everybody's. Not a problem. Opportunity. Yeah. Business. Oh, absolutely. It, it, um, absolutely. And, and, you know, let's face it, every organization, um, no matter how well you're doing, you can do something better. And, and I think the key is when an organization looks at itself and says, Hey, you know, we can do this better. Where are their holes? Because no matter how good you are, there's always going to be some holes. And, um, and I, and I think that's, you know, if, if we can leave people with the idea and, and everybody that's listening and uh, Matt and I both plan to be available for Surge to be uh, there to answer questions is, you know, this can be done. You can do it. It just takes a bit of work. It, yeah, it, and it, there's so much more meat to this discussion, Ed. And just to, it's just, just to throw that out there and, and happy to share lessons learned and, 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 you know, where some of the pitfalls were that we really probably don't have time to talk about, but uh, even to pass on some of the, some of the scripts I have, I've written with that. Um, I think it's worth checking out. I really do. Uh, really learned a lot through this. And, uh, and I want to thank you too, Ed. So, cause I learned a lot from you. And, I and let's, uh, let's put a little pitch in here, Matt. Uh, there's a good chance that Matt and I are going to put in a proposal to do this program, not this program, but to, to share this information, um, maybe sure. a little more organized uh, at ASAE. Well, we said that was a conversation, right? For 2018. So if there's anybody that's watching that's part of that committee and you like what you hear, you know, maybe you can put in a good word that, uh, that we can be on the program <laughs> next, uh, next summer, wherever the meeting is next summer. I forgot where it is. Um, Chicago. Chicago, that's right, Chicago. So, um, uh, other than that, uh, Matt, thanks, thanks so much. I, I really appreciate your input, and and I really have enjoyed working with you at SNAMI. It's uh, it's it's been a true pleasure, and um, I'm glad that we're able to 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 share with everybody uh, some of the things that have worked, and um, yeah, maybe a couple pitfalls along the way. Thanks, Ed. Likewise, really appreciate all your support. Bye bye. Enjoy the conversation. Thanks for. Allow me to join you here. Really appreciate it. Okay. So say good night, Gracie. <laughs> Big smile. <laughs> You're not old enough to remember that. That that shows that I'm a baby boomer. <laughs> oh, who was it? Uh, was it George Burns? George, oh, the old oh, George Burns show. Good night, Gracie. And then this is his wife. She said, Good night. <laughs> you remember? Yeah. <laughs> I guess she just didn't think oh, they'll probably cut this off. <laughs> anyway. Hey guys. Uh, Thanks so much. Bye-bye now. Okay. You're still recording, Ed. No? It still says recording in the top left. It's all right. It's an outtake. Hold on. No? Yeah. Okay.